A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, December 13th. Students are heading back to the classroom on a full-time basis in the new year. Education Minister Santia Bradshaw today announced that face-to-face -face classes would resume in the Hillary term, which starts next Tuesday. During a press conference at the ministry's Constitution Road headquarters this afternoon, Bradshaw said the decision to allow face-to-face -face teaching had been taken after extensive discussions with unions, principals, teachers, students, and the COVID-19 monitoring unit. And I'm pleased to say that there is um, overall consensus amongst the stakeholders um, that we have to move in the direction of being able to allow our students to return to the classroom environment fully. Of course, on the 5th of January, it will not mean that every single student will return to the classroom, um, you know, one time. But what it does mean is that we will be working over the course of the next few weeks with the COVID monitoring unit to be able to gradually return students to the classroom. She explained, however, that special needs students, children preparing for the 11 plus examination, first formers and fifth and sixth form students set in CXC and CAPE exams would be among the first to return to school on a full time basis. Meanwhile, students and teachers preparing for this year's common entrance have some additional time to do so. Minister Bradshaw announced a new date for the test. We have also um, recognized that um, the date for the 11 plus exam, which was traditionally scheduled in May, um, is perhaps not going to be practical for persons to be able to sit that exam on that date, given the amount of time that has been lost. And so a decision has been taken by the ministry to allow the moving of the date until the 22nd of June of 2021. Um, it has arisen out of several representations by teachers indicating a better level of comfort um, if they had the additional time to complete the syllabus um, and also a preference that we didn't move it until um, July, uh, which is obviously in the high peak of their vacation, as would have happened um, last year. So at this point, the common entrance examination um, is now going to be scheduled for the 22nd of June, and I hope that parents, teachers, and certainly um, our students um, will breathe a sigh of relief um, over the course of the next few days and certainly the coming weeks and months as it relates to their preparation for that particular examination. In today's COVID-19 update, one person tested positive for the virus from the 574 tests completed by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory yesterday. The 33-year-old male visitor, who is asymptomatic, arrived in Barbados on SVG Air on December 21 and tested positive on his second test. Barbados has now recorded 372 confirmed cases, 200 females and 172 males. Five persons were discharged from the Harrison Point isolation facility today, bringing recoveries to 312. Persons in isolation have dropped to 53, and the lab has performed 69,252 tests since February 2020. The Fair Trading Commission rules that the Barbados Light and Power Company breached Section 20 of the Utility Regulations Act when some 130,000 customers were affected by island-wide power outages over two days in November last year. In issuing its decision today following a year of investigations, the FTC also pointed out that the utility company will have to compensate over 600 customers who submitted claims once those claims are verified. The FTC reported that inadequate plant maintenance by the BL&P was the major factor which led to the outages. It also pointed out that the BL&P had insufficient operating reserves to sustain adequate energy supplies to customers on a consistent basis. There was inadequate testing of switchgear and protection systems. There was not enough monitoring and surveillance of electrical equipment. And fuel quality was not verified on a consistent basis. In response, the utility company apologized for the blackout, saying the outages were highly unusual and involved a complex set of circumstances, some that were simply beyond the reasonable control of the company. It expressed disappointment at the findings and said it would seek to set the record straight and work with the FTC to bring the issue to an appropriate conclusion for the regulator and customers. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news, Trinidad and Tobago's National Security Minister Stuart Young says the border closure exemption system is designed to be as fair as possible. His comments come amid public criticism about the recent return of the daughter of the Prime Minister and the son of the Attorney General from abroad. Joel Brown of TV6 News reports. Minister Young said he has been sued as the Minister of National Security on numerous occasions, but that to date, the courts have upheld the system and the policies of repatriation. He said the system is designed to be as fair as possible and there is no discrimination as the government tries to repatriate nationals safely. In the past two weeks, the government has had to defend its border closure exemption policy in the Court of Public Opinion in light of criticisms as one of the daughters of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, who had been in New York before TNT's borders were closed on March 22nd, returned home last week. Dr. Rowley dismissed any speculation that his daughter got to the head of the line. No, it wasn't the head of the line. It was the end of the Iguana tale. She came home on the last flight that could have brought her home in time for Christmas. No favors, didn't jump any queue. Minister Young said the Prime Minister did not discuss the matter with him. His daughter put in an application like everyone else on the 4th of November, 11, yes, correct, some time ago, and was in the queue like everyone else. Criticisms have surfaced over the return of one of the sons of Attorney General Faris al rawi who reportedly was recently in Ireland. The AG reportedly said no favors were granted for his son. Minister Young said that as at July 29th, there were 5,539 applications made to enter Trinidad and Tobago, and that as at December 23rd, 9,557 exemptions were granted. He said this shows that the vast majority of people who were genuinely stuck outside as at March 22nd were granted exemptions to return. On the international front, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson today signed legislation approved by British lawmakers to implement the post-Brexit trade deal agreed with the European Union last week. The fruit of months of arduous negotiations, at long last, the post-Brexit trade deal was presented before the British Prime Minister for his signature. The treaty that I've, I've just signed is, is not the end. It is, it is a new beginning. And I think the beginning of what will be a wonderful relationship between the UK and our friends and partners in the European Union. An hour earlier, MPs in the House of Commons overwhelmingly approved the agreement. The eyes to the right, 521. The nose to left 73. The eyes have it, the eyes have it unlocked. Desperate to avoid a Brexit cliff edge, most opposition lawmakers got behind Boris Johnson's deal. A thin deal is better than no deal. And not implementing this deal would mean immediate tariffs and quotas with the EU, which will push up prices and drive businesses to the wall. Weighing in at over 1,200 pages, the hard-won accord covers over 700 billion euros worth of trade between the UK and the EU and ensures a zero-tariff, zero-quota exchange of goods across the channel. The deal must now pass the House of Lords and receive royal assent from the Queen. As it clears parliamentary hurdles at breakneck speed, it's on schedule to come into force before 11pm GMT on New Year's Eve. That's when the UK leaves the EU single market, fundamentally changing how the neighbours live, work and trade for years to come. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.